Hey, everybody. God has blessed us to be here yet again. Amen. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I lay my burden on down, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I lay my burden. You said that we all can assemble, uh, God, in fellowship one to another. So here we are, God. We're here, uh, God, ready and willing to hear what you have to say to yes, the church. Yes, God, we Lord. pray, Father, right now that you will continue to bless those who are with us, those who are privately with us virtually. Whatever you need to do, God, bring God what you need into this place. God, we ask now Lord, that whatever you can do, God, to give us more understanding, give us wisdom. Help us to comprehend that which God only you said the believers can comprehend. God, I pray you, God, that you would keep watching, keeping, and blessing us yeah. now, his, and forevermore. Yeah. Amen. 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 We're so glad, so glad God has again fixed it so that we can do the things that he's called us to do. I want to take you yet again as we uh, continue last time we met. Uh, we were focused on completing uh, lesson three, when we called it a servant's spirit. Uh, one of the things, one of the things that we discovered last time we met uh, was a true servant. First of all, uh, as we look at, I got a testimony. You ain't let it. Do I'm, it. I'm sorry. Go, go right ahead. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm about to I got to let y'all know. Say this one. Go ahead. Uh, last week when I went there, I had the doctor for blood work. Amen. They called me a week before prior and said, you ain't got your blood pressure medicine since October. Wow. I took so many medicines, I forgot I wasn't taking this. Uh, and uh, I went and took that blood work. Amen. And they called me Friday. They said, Mr. Woman, I don't know what you're doing, but keep doing what you're doing. All my numbers, truly, everything was on me. And I went to 240 times, 219. Wow. The Lord is good. All the time, man. I was so happy. You know, you want them minerals to be on there, you know? Right? We do, we do. But yeah, the Lord is so good. You know? Thank you, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> nah, man. I had to let y'all. I went in last week. I had to let y'all know the priest, y'all. Yeah, it's a God. That's a big good. blessing to me, hey, man. Amen. That is yeah. great. That is yeah. great. Amen. Hey, everybody else good? All right, all right. I'm like, man, let me want to let people know. Like, <laughs> I said, I didn't give my time. Me, Amen. Let's get started, guys, again. Now, notice that there are three, three uh, variables that our lesson talked about that defines a true servant. First of all, we discover a true servant does not demand recognition. But then also we discovered that a true servant does not demand rewards. Uh, but then lastly, we also discovered that a true servant does not demand self-rights. I want to share with you, what are we trying to say to you uh, as, as we look at what it means to have a servant spirit? Well, first of all, when we start to look at a true servant does not demand recognition, uh, just by, by second of review, let me share this with you. When we look at Matthew 6 and 12, it says, take heed uh, that, watch this, you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by who? Them. This becomes important because as we look at it, one of the things we discovered last week, Belma, is the fact 
that Jesus is showing us clearly that God's righteous standard, remember that, that it does involve doing the thing for the sake of display or image. Uh, he says to be seen by them. And this becomes, Charles, important because he's asking questions, who's seeing you? Who's looking at you? What are the things that you are trying to do as it relates to being a true servant, but also uh, making sure, wanting people to recognize the things that you're doing. And so he says, first of all, uh, if we're going to be a true servant of God, we, we can't always find ourselves wanting uh, to make sure that, that we, we have these examples in front of us uh, that, that are there for the sake of the display or image. But we also discovered last time that a true servant does not demand rewards. That's number two. Now, when we look again, as we realize that according to Genesis 24 and 2, he talks about being ruled over all that he had. And you realize uh, there was a testimony there uh, as it relates to the servant being given responsibility to go out and find a wife because he had showed himself to be responsible. And the fact of his faithfulness, God rewarded him and gave him privilege to do other things. But when we look at it, we realize that according to that true servant, this is what we want to say, we got to learn to give without a return. Amen. Now, this becomes important because a servant gives without expecting anything, here it is, in return from the person he or she has served. That's number one. But also a true servanthood is void of manipulation. What that means, uh, uh, Brother Charles, is the fact that, that it's not about controlling others. It's, it's not about putting ourselves in a point where we manipulate others to get out of the way. And so when we look again and we realize that the best thing that could have happened to a slave in Abraham's day, this is what Genesis talks about, was to have a kind, benevolent, and here it is, a generous master. And so as we look at it, first of all, by way of review, we realize that a true servant uh, does not demand reward. And then first of all, a true servant, as we look at it, does not demand recognition. Everybody good? Now, as we move to the third and the final one, uh, this is where we stopped last time. Now, again, as we look at it, we realize that, that a true servant does not demand self rights Now, I want you to look at this because this becomes important to us because a lot of times people think that they deserve certain things, and that uh, you owe certain things. And, and this, is, this is contrary to what Jesus is teaching. And so as, as we again look at the last part of this, let me share this with you, that when we start talking about a true servant, Romans 12 and 10, can I take you there? Romans... 12 and 10. Let's get into the Bible. Romans 12 and 10. Uh, look, look again as, as, as we start to look at the lesson here. Uh, it is here that Paul began to share with us what, what it means to yield, what, what it means to uh, position ourselves, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, when it comes down to the things of God. Notice as he began to talk about the role of a servant. Uh, he, he says, be, be kindly affectionate one another, but brother love and honor preferring one another, not slow for the business, firm in the spirit, serving the Lord. I, I want to share with you the servant yields the right of way to others. This is ultimately what he's saying to us. That, that, that when we rejoice, uh, when, when we learn to be kind to one another, when, when we learn how to show brother love, guess what? We're yielding, we're honoring others above our self. So as, as we look at it, Lord said, here is the key for us. All the time, it involves our attitude. This becomes important because when we look again at the lesson, look what Paul is saying to us. Paul says that a Christian, that is a Christ follower, watch what happens here, should not have a cold, standoffish attitude. Why? Because notice what happens in Romans 12. He, he, and, and 10, he said, be kindly affectionate for one another. He says, preferring one another, uh, loving them, honoring them. It's hard to do that when you stand off. It's hard to do that when, when you, you don't reach out to help others. And so part of being a true servant is our ability to be kind, to honor without preference. In other words, when, when we only want to like or deal with people that even look like us, who go to our own churches or who in our community. But when we think about it, part of that servanthood is our ability to reach out 
even among those who are different from us. This is where I'm going with this. Even from those who may not share our, our same pigmentation, they, they, they may not have grown up on the same track as you, may not even be on the same social economic ladder as you are, but if we're going to be true servants, we then have to learn, as Paul is saying, we can't have a standoffish attitude. We, we're trying to win people to Christ. Are y'all with me? We're, we're trying to help people to have better life and help them to have life and have it more abundantly. But but if we always stand off, if we always think we're better than folks, amen. I always have our nose up in the air as if uh, we're too good to even humble ourselves down to, to help even the least of these. Uh, the Bible says, are, are we really demonstrating what a true servant is? Because yes, then you miss, you skip some stuff. No, no, I, 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 this is where we are now. I just gave you a review last oh, week. Oh, for last yes, week. Okay, yes, I went yes, here. Oh, I'm okay, sorry, okay. man. Can't make you sure. I, you had to go back and get the tape, nigga. I'm, I'm good. I'm just making sure now. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. You're good now. Okay. But this, this is where we stopped at. We started talking about uh, that last part, that true servant. And, and, and as we started to look at it, we realized that, that if Paul is giving us the attitude we should have as true servants. Everybody got it? Uh, why, why do you think this is important? Why, why do you think our attitude is important as we are part of what we call true service. Anybody want to throw your hand in there? Because, Pastor, you know, if, if you're a God, you're a child of God, you, I'm going to just say it. I, I call myself a true servant. Amen. The first thing I had to do when I left and got out the streets and drugs, I asked the Lord to humble me. You got to be oh. humble. Okay. And have a great heart. Mm. And if you got that, the Lord give you that, what come out of your mouth? You don't know what you put out your mouth. Holy Spirit gonna take over and take over and bring everything out for you. It's gonna be correct. Mm -hmm. But you got to be humble. You got you got to be humble. And Lord, I already know our heart. So. Right. Yeah. There you go. And, and, and so as, as we start to look at, it, we realize that 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 Paul is saying we gotta we gotta let love mm -hmm. be without hypocrisy. Amen. That very word hypocrisy means that 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 we cannot show love uh, every now and then or, or according to uh, some standard, because sometimes when we think about hypocrisy, the very word means that we're doing something on one end and not doing it in another. The Bible says we become hypocritical the things we're doing, and so so when we think about it, he says, "Be kindly affectionate one another with brotherly love." That means not lagging in diligence, not uh, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing, uh, having that patience and tribulation. Continuing steadfastly, distributing to the needs of the saints, giving to hospitality. All of this, Paul says, comes from a good attitude. Mm -hmm. Comes from, from having not a cold and standoffish attitude, but, but that idea of yielding. Yep. This, this is the key for us. So when we think about it, do, do, you, do, do, do we have what we call a yielded spirit? Let me share that with you because this becomes important. When, when we're servants, uh, when we have the spirit of yielding, that, that means that uh, when, when, when someone is here, watch this, a, a servant has a yielded spirit both to God and to others. This becomes important because when we think about it, uh, while, while a servant will stand up for what is right in God's eye, a person with a genuine, I want you to see that Charles Washington, heart does not insist that they have their own way. And, and that becomes important for us because as we look at servanthood, it can always be your way or no way. It's part of that attitude. Can, can I yield and let somebody else get credit? Can, can I yield and let someone else be praised sometimes? Can, can I yield and allow others to be able uh, to, to be preferred above me? That's what he's saying to you and I. So, so when, when we have the right spirit, uh, when, we're, when we're standing up in God's eyes, this is what he sees as someone who has a true spirit, a true spirit. Uh, someone who is willing to not have it his own way, but someone is willing to say, you know what, Charles, you get the credit now. You know, uh, you know, Lassie, you go forward now, and and, and, and and you get the things now above me. Go ahead. Yes, you sir. know what, I guarantee you everybody does it. And I, I really start paying attention mm -hmm. to this lately. Mm -hmm. If you're doing something, I said, you know what, you're doing that just like me. Mm -hmm. Everybody do that. Mm -hmm. But today, and 
I thank God for it. I think before I say that. Yeah. But a lot of, now y'all know it. Now y'all ain't saying that y'all know. It. You do that just like me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people say that. Well, because a lot Don't, of times. You know, you ain't gonna be nobody else to say that. You know, you doing it like them. Yeah, yeah. And I hear it all the time. He didn't even call my name. I did this and I did that. <laughs> uh, hey, go ahead. Well, Charles, Charles, tagging uh, off of what you said, mm-hmm. uh, uh, like in our head, the things we've done, we change that life, right? Amen. Mm-hmm. And so it, it, it's like for us, as far as uh, I may be a little bit back, no, as far as like, say, me coming out. I just see my, my, I just put my pants behind me, but coming out to like being here, right? I'm mm-hmm. um, real careful mm-hmm. because yeah. I don't, you know, you know, I, I want to make sure that I'm doing it right this time. Amen. Right? So, Amen. like he said, it's, it's kind of make me scared, but I got to get tight. That's right. Know, mm-hmm. Let somebody know what I went through mm-hmm. so that, you know, they can come on out. Right, because again, you know, part of part of our witness uh, is wrapped up in our testimony. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we got a lot of uh, used to be's in the church. Amen. We got a, a lot of people who came from some some situations, and, and part of your testimony is the fact that I was tested and I made it through. And so, as we start to look at certain things in our life, uh, that testimony you just never know if it will help somebody, it will bless right. somebody. But when we start to look at it again, we realize. That, that this is what God is looking for. A person with a genuine, watch this, servant's heart. That's what he's looking for. And that's that person who does not insist on having their way. The ones who want to be, you know, a propped up and recognized. So he said to you and I, we've got to have a yielded spirit in order to be a true servant. But to realize that, like he was saying, uh-huh. and I mean myself, today I think for, I think if you don't think for your speak, mm-hmm. anything will come out your mouth. That's true. That's you true. ain't gonna act like you used to. Act. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'll say the thing you used to say. Yeah. But I know that's what helped me. I think yeah. today for our speak. Well, a, a lot of it too. Remember, we we we've got to always be able to because God has placed His Spirit within us, mm-hmm. and because He have His Spirit in us, He helps us to yield to God more so to our flesh. Because yeah, you got a good point. Sometimes. That flesh part of me, Belma, want to cuss you out. Say certain there things. You go. That flesh part of me, you you say something to me, I'm, I no, 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 no. I've got to get the last word. But when we have a yielded spirit, genuine, God allows us to listen. God allows us uh, to, to be able to meet the needs of everyone that's around us. Because remember, uh, part of Paul, as he said in Romans 12, is the fact that when we have that type of spirit, then we begin to distribute to the needs of the saints. We be given to hospitality when we're demonstrating the right type of attitude. So, as we start to look at it, notice what Paul said. We are to love God, first of all, with all of our heart, soul, and mind, and our neighbors. How? As ourselves. It is out of that love, speaking Scott, that we serve. Not out of my light, because sometimes people may not like me, but because I love God, that love of God allows me to love people in spite of them. So when we learn to love God first, we become yielded in our spirit enough to even love those who may not even love us. Amen. And so again, as, as we begin to look at it, we realize that if we love but you do not give to a person or not generous in your service to that person, on what ground, I need you to see this, can you truly say you love? Because if you're giving out of just, you know, spite, expecting stuff to come back to you, uh, or out of manipulation or controlling that person, then here it is. You don't have the same grounds as that person who is giving out of a generous heart. Remember, distributing to the needs. Uh, Prone to hospitality. All of that comes about because I have a yielded spirit. I have an attitude that allows me to go forward and do the things that God has called me to do. And so here it is. Part of our ability to be a true servant is it has to be love in action. Amen? Let's go a little further because here is the key for us. Uh, when we talk about service, service is the evidence of generous love. Can I share that with you? Service is the evidence, now watch this, of generous love. Uh, Matthew, can I take you to Matthew? Matthew chapter 22. I want to share this with you because I, I believe this is important. Matthew 22, uh, 
uh, I want to move to verse 37 because, uh, again, this, this is Jesus speaking uh, to his disciples, trying to share with them uh, what, what this love in action is about. Matthew uh, chapter 22, uh, verse 37. Verse 37. Look, look, look where I read those with me. Uh, verse 37 says this uh, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt what? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second, this is the part we got to keep in mind as, as believers, is like unto it. Thou shalt do what? Love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, here, here is sometimes I, I get tripped up. What does it mean to love my neighbor as myself? What does that mean to us? How do I, if, if I love me, and I do love me for me, start to then love my neighbor as I love myself? Anybody want to throw, throw your hand in there? What does that mean? Like you know, a lot of people you know, sometimes you need to love your neighbor, make sure mm. they're good people. Sometimes you need to be far off. Okay. And like, say so you see somebody needing help, yeah. you know, you might go down there and help them instead of talking about them, lift them up. Lift them up. Yeah, That's right. love. It's not have to be your love, your neighbor. It should be just your love. Okay. Yeah. So, but because because even even the statement came, who is my neighbor? When Jesus was 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 trying to get them to understand. Uh, that, that the neighbor may not be the person that lives yeah, next yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it may not be the person you high-five on Sunday when the preacher say, turn to your neighbor, high-five, or this, this and that. Who is my neighbor? It, it's an oftentimes the question, is, the, is my neighbor that person I run into at Walmart or behind the line at Kroger's? Is, is, is the neighbor the person I, 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 I see on my job? Who is your neighbor that Jesus is saying, you got to love them as yourself. I want to jump in there. Who, who is your name that you need to love as you love yourself? And, and this becomes important for us because this gives us the platform to be true servants. Because now we've got to identify, okay, who, who are these people that i got to love like I love me? And, and, and it could be family. Yeah. Could be friends, could be the unchurch, could be that young lady who who is struggling, that little boy who said, "Well, I don't want to live no more." These are your neighbors, mm -hmm. and 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 if you within yourself said, "Look, I'm struggling with this and that," how do you love you? How do you deal with you? That is what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we got to put ourselves in the place of the people that we run into, and how would you want somebody to treat? How would you want somebody to minister to you? How would you want someone to help you when you ain't got no food? And you're standing out beside Walmart with a sign in your hand saying, uh, please give me a dollar. What if that was you? How would you want people to treat you? Even in tipping. You know, uh, like I work in a place where they tip. Some people don't tip. But that don't mean for me, well, I go somewhere not to tip. Uh -huh. But I feel it when they don't tip. Because, because you walked in the shoes. Okay. <laughs> That's like, it. I think I was so nice to them that they tip. <laughs> But, but do you think, I, I think, and this is this is important, you bring up an excellent point. Do, do you think we have more compassion because we walk in some of the shoes of the people we see every day? You know, I, for, for me, you know, every time I hear a person who, who a, a house is caught on fire, it, it, it warms my heart because here it is, I was there. I knew what it was like to watch my house caught on fire and happen to rebuild. Why? Because, again, I've been there. And so, again, Charles, that, that is a part of me that, that no matter you know, if it's on the TV, I, I'm always looking and saying, what can I do? Because I know the people who reached out to me when I was down to nothing but the clothes on my back and how God allowed certain people to minister to me and it blessed me. Anybody been there before? And, and so, again, when we start to look at it, we can be more identifying because uh, we have been in some of the same places as our neighbors and our friends. Uh, and, and again, I, I, I love to minister to young people and tell them, hey, you got to stay away from alcohol because I know what it did for me. You know, you got to stay away from certain things because I walked in your shoe. You may think it's good now, but 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 here it is. Uh, you, you, if you're not careful, it can lead to destruction. Mm -hmm. So again, we said uh, service is the evidence of a generous love. Here it is for us as we try to 
round the corner. If you can answer the question, are you God's servant, with the resounding yes, here it is for us, uh, here is the key, then the evidence should be able to back it up. What is the evidence, here it is for us, of your willingness to serve others without demanding recognition, rewards, or rights? That's, that's what we are. Uh, can, 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 can definitively, uh, when, when it's all said and done, uh, do, do you have to really justify or did people actually see your works? Uh, they, you, you don't have to get up and talk about it every Sunday because they know that's who you are. They, they, they know that when people are hurting, they know you're going to be on the phone. They, they know that, that when, when people are going through, that, that you're going to drop a little food on the, on, on, the, on, the, on the stair because that's just who you are. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And, and that becomes important because uh, if, if every time you got to show evidence that backs it up, then, then that means we got to question our motives. If you just do it because, hey, that's just what I do, then Jesus is saying to you and I that you have that willingness to serve others without reward. That becomes important. Let's close this up because if we take a look at realize that many people only uh, give lip service to servanthood. Uh, the true servant is not, here it is, only one uh, who, who has a heart for service or desire to be a better servant, but one who is actually engaged in service. Uh, in other words, you can talk about it, but are you really engaged in it? You can come back and say, you know, back in 1985, I did this. But, but, but here it is. We're talking about being engaged in it. What are you doing now? What is the evidence? What can people look at in your life and say, you know what? I've done something more for others than even I've done for myself. That begins to share with us what we call uh, Amen developing a uh, servant spirit. Any questions or comments before we move to the next one? But Pastor, that's amen. how you receive your blessing. That's how you receive it. Amen. Sure. amen. I know a lot of people, people are trying to pay me in this and that. No, no, no. The Lord blessing me. This, you know, I might be questioning my blessing. Amen. You know, when we help in our servant others. We, we, you, you never know. He sees everything and knows everything God made. Amen. Amen. Because he does. He sees, he knows everything that we do. That's right. And, and, and again, if we're doing stuff, uh, I, I think that I, I had a young man and, and, and uh, you know, uh, stay across the street, but kids came home and, and um, you know, we were trying to get to the funeral and all those things. And, and uh, I, I shared with him, I said, look, uh, I'm going to send the boys over you, and, and, and here it is. He went on cut the boys half, had them ready to go. Uh, got back that evening, going to text him, say, hey, let me know how much you owe me. He said, look, Pastor, you owe me nothing. There you go. I'm like, wait a minute, man. <laughs> you, you know, because again, I'm his neighbor. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, he gave, he blessed my children. But he said, look, you don't owe me anything. You just, you just keep doing what you do. Oh, you and, and, and that is the evidence oftentimes of the fact that, that, that when you be good to people, guess what happens? People will always be good to you. Amen? Right. Right. All right, let's move on a little bit. Let's move on a little bit because one of the things that we want to move on to is the fact that uh, we want to talk about Jesus' uh, lesson for our role model as a servant. Those who have your, your books in front of you, uh, we, we look at what we call Christian service. Now, again, by way of intro, let me share this with you. This is lesson four. Y'all got it in the top? Lesson four, Jesus, our model is serving. Y'all got that one? Anyway, this is a brand new one. I just did over here. So if you need another one, jump on. Throw them other two on the side. Let's talk a little bit about this. Well, when we look at it by way of introduction, it talks about Christian serving. It's certainly an important and necessary aspect of living what we call a balanced Christian life. Most growing Christians, however, are unbalanced uh, in their approach to this vital area of Christian living. So often we ask, where should I serve? What ministry is best for me? But the proper balance should also include, do I meet the qualifications of a good servant? That's the question. And how do I become the kind of servant that God can do what you that is the key for us. How do we become the type of servant that God can use? Let me throw it out there. How do you, how do you, uh, class, become the kind of servant that God can use? Anybody want to throw your hat in? How do you do this? 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 How
How do you become that type of servant God can use? Uh, because again, uh, you know, oftentimes uh, some of us, we, God can't use us. We're not ready. We're not teachable. We're not uh, ready to give ourselves. So, so how do you? Let's make it personal. Become the kind of servant God can use. First, you gotta develop a relationship. I love it. I love it. The devil said you gotta develop a relationship with God first. Oh, God can use it. Anybody else? How do you do this? How do you do this? How do you do this? How do you become that servant God can use? Uh, well, his okay. Follow his commandments because, again, we want to know what God says to do when certain situations come up. Amen. 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 Well, again, part of what we are seeing here is that Jesus has become an example for us to follow. As it relates to servanthood. And so as we start to get into this next chapter, part of our role is to understand, first of all, what is Jesus' role? What does he show us as it relates uh, to us being uh, servants? Mark chapter 10, verse 45. Can I take you there? Mark chapter 10. Let's go back. Mark chapter 10. Uh, this, this verse 45. I want to share this with you. I believe uh, is pertinent to some of the things that, that, we, that we, we have in front of us. Uh, if, if you don't mind, let me start at verse 44, uh, and I'm going to move down from there. And, 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 and watch what happened. Mark chapter 10, uh, verse 44, and it says, uh, and, and whatsoever, uh, and whosoever of you would be the chiefest shall be servant of all. But even the Son of Man came not to be ministered, some translation, not to be served, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. I share with you, you know, why is this important? Because if we look at it, can I share this with you? It, it says the Son of Man. We, we recognize that, that the Son of Man is, is a title that is used for Jesus. He said, even the Son of Man did not come to be served. Remember, in some translation, he used minister, the very word. Uh, minister, derivative is serve. So he's saying Jesus didn't come to serve, watch this, to be served, but to serve, or, or, and here it is, and to give. So if we're going to meet the qualifications of being uh, a servant like Jesus, we've got to first understand that Jesus came to serve, but he also gave. So we realize one of the for, two of the first concepts uh, that we got to keep in mind as we become more like Jesus is are you willing to serve or minister? And then the second concept is, are you willing to give for me? Amen? So as we look again at Mark chapter 10 and 45, what, what we began to see here is the characteristics that are set up to help us to understand what our attitude should be like. Because here it is for us, the Lord Jesus, when we think about it, is the perfect model servant. And throughout the days of his ministry, he was totally involved, watch this, in serving who? Others. That's why he said he gave his life not for just the Israelites, but watch this, for the many. Here's the key for us. How many of us are willing to give our lives or to give or to serve the many? Now, that many may, may have some connotation because sometimes that many say, you know, I'm just going to deal with my folk. They're going to deal with people at Great Union. They're going to deal with people who I like. But this was not Jesus' concept. Jesus, no matter where you were, no matter how, uh, uh, amen, sometimes disabled, without sight, or without hearing, uh, it didn't, didn't matter about uh, whether people came who were hungry. Jesus was willing to meet them where they were. When he met them where they needed, the Bible says he gave himself for the ransom. Now, I want to share this as we go further because one of the things uh, that our, our book outlines is the fact that Jesus, here it is, uh, is like King David. If you read the book, watch what happens here. Acts chapter 13, verse 36. Can I take you there? Acts chapter 13. Uh, again, uh, here, here, is, here is the writer now comparing Jesus with what he called David. Now, we all know David, and, and, and we realize that David was a man after God's own heart. But according to Acts chapter 13, verse 36, and look what it said, for David, after he had served 
his own generation by the will of God fell asleep and was laid unto his father and saw corruption. Now, again, why, why is it that, that he, he's mentioning David? Well, when we then look at it, David, uh, when we start to look at it, we realize that, 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 that King David's life, uh, as, as we look at from the Apostle Paul, uh, for, for David, after he had served his own generation, we see here he did the will of God. And, and the more we began to, to look at David's life, we began to see more about Jesus' life. Because as we look again and we realize that not only did we see that, but David was not regarded by the first disciples of Jesus. Watch this. Primarily as a great soldier, statesman, king of songs. But they regarded him as what? A servant. That becomes important because when we look at Jesus, there are so many titles we can give Jesus because Jesus is a savior. Jesus was a Messiah. Jesus uh, was, and in the old church, he said, he's my everything. But when we look at the model that Jesus left for us, we, we cannot get away from this concept of being a servant. And, and that becomes important for us because, as, as again, as we look at it, we realize that, that David, uh, uh, for the most part, had that same servanthood trait that we saw in Jesus. So, as, as again, we look at it, we realize that in this way, Jesus is most assuredly like David. Why? Because he was and is the supreme servant, both David, and watch this, and Jesus knew the secret of true success. Watch this. From God's perspective, this is what blew my mind. And here's, here's, here's what Charles Stanley said. What's the secret then? Here it is. Discovering God's goal for your life. And then, Big Scott, achieve those goals. Now, this is the part that blew my mind. Okay, wait a minute now. God has goals. I know he has a plan. I, I know he has a destiny, but does God have a goal for your life? Hmm. That's, that's, that's the part that oftentimes, that, that, that even for me as a counselor, sometimes when I'm working with people, one of the first things I do is I say, okay, we got to figure out how we can be successful, the way we can do that. Uh, it, it is, and we got to put some goals in place, some measurable things that we can do to get you to that level of success that you have. But here we talk about the goals that God has for the life of his children. Now I look at it again because you got to understand that, that, that everything God made was good. Everybody believe that. And because everything that God made was good, God had a purpose for making each and every one of us. And his very purpose, uh, we, we may not know it early in our life, but you keep on living, keep trusting, having a sister Velma said a relationship with him, then God starts to show and reveal what our true purpose is. And, and here is the key for us. Even as we do that, we recognize that God has ultimate goals that we have in front of us before he takes us home. David had a goal. David, one of his first goals was to unite the kingdom. That was a goal. That's what God purposed him to do. One of David's goal was to build uh, the city of Jerusalem up. That was part of his story. One of David's goal was to bring back praise and worship to the temple. Uh, God began to allow him to do it. And whenever he finished his goals, the Bible says in Acts, he went to sleep. Let me share this with all of us. No matter if you know it or not, God has a set amount of goals that you have to come before he takes you off. Whether those goals are short-lived, or whether those goals take you 70, 80 years in your life. There are some things that God ordained before you were even a twinkle in your mom and daddy eye Amen. that he knew Charles Washington would accomplish. Amen. And he knew that, that beyond a shadow of a doubt, these are some of the things that would happen. So we realize, first of all, when we learn to, to know that God's goal for your life are there, the problem we have oftentimes is the fact that we don't spend enough time with God for us to discover what our goals are. We don't spend enough time in our Bible coming to church and 
And, and here it is. Because of that, we, we don't know what true success looks like from whose perspective? God's right. perspective. So as, as we look again and realize that, that the supreme servant, even Jesus, uh, discovered what his true purpose was, and he achieved it. And once he achieved it, God took him back to glory. Now, here at the Chief Brother, when we start to look at some of us, when we look at the goal, uh, where you put here to minister, where, where you put here to be that singer that brings glory to God, where you put here to help us, where you put here uh, to be a servant, and, and, and that is something that, that I think brings a new level of purpose to our lives when we know this is what God created me for. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You, you will know that life has meaning when you're walking in your purpose. Mm -hmm. When you know that, that God's going to keep me here long enough so that I can accomplish all that he asked me to do. And when we learn how to walk in it, learn how to achieve it from God's perspective, then we have more purpose in our life. We can leave it. One of the things I love, I tell my, my wife all the time, I say, when, when God takes me home, please don't put a frown on my face. Don't let him do it. Because if I live life with a smile on my face, then I want to leave here with a smile on my okay. face. Because I just believe when you learn to walk in your purpose, you get up every day with a little joy. Because you know this is another day God has given me to walk in the purpose and the goal and get me to my destiny. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Yes, ma'am. I Isaiah, show the people that if you live 
a life of righteousness. Y'all stay with me here. And love, then watch this. They will see their prayers answered. Okay, let me, let me remind you. I don't want you to miss this. If, if they share, he said, share with the people that if they live righteously, right before God, here it is, and love, love others and love God, then they will see their prayers answered. Now, I want to go a little further because I can say, okay, okay, God, I see where you're going, but how does that relate to us? Here it is. They would have lives full of light, full of healing, full of righteousness, full of glory of the Lord. Here's what he's saying to you and I. When we have a life of service, we can also have a full life. When you want to do what God is saying to you to do, when you walk like God says walk, when you do what he's asking you to do, then he says your life can be full. <laughs> That's what Isaiah said that God told me to tell the people. If you want your life to be full, just keep doing what God said. <laughs> and if you do that, watch what he says, then your life will be full. Now, he goes a little further because uh, even in that same translation, he talks about ministry to serving to the hungry. And with more than the food, they, they, they will also have to seek to satisfy the afflicted souls and God will bring blessings into their lives. Isaiah puts it there and says to you and I that, that when you do the things that God said, God will bless your life. Amen. But not only will he bless your life, but then when you don't mind helping the afflicted, when, when you don't mind reaching your hand out to serve the hungry, this is what he's saying. When, when, you, when, you, when you give them more than food, but you give them substance to help them get through life. He says, watch this. God will bless you. So again, as we start to look at it, we realize that, 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 that God, uh, through the process of that, we, we've got to ask, to ask the question, are we actively serving? Are, are, are we giving of ourselves? Are we uh, serving and ministering to others? And here it is for us. That is what Jesus' ministry was about. Why? It was about active service. Amen. Some people now, you know, we we, we have to wonder if they are active or, un, or inactive in our churches. Jesus is saying every, it, it, it ain't even about church membership now. It is about serving. Are you actively serving somebody, some entity, some community, some neighborhood? Are you actively serving? Here it is. What we often fail to recognize is that for nearly 30 years, you might have think Jesus was always on the scene, but remember, Jesus didn't start his earthly ministry after 30. So we began to ask the question, what was Jesus doing? We, we, we remember him being, as a young boy, coming into the temple and, and, and befuddling all of those who heard him. But after that, that was the years of silence. And we wonder, what happened between Young Jesus coming into the temple, and, and 30 years later when he's walking in Capernaum. Well, I want to share with you, Jesus served his family. I don't feel like this have debated this, because uh, surely as we start to look at it, uh, and we, 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 we don't have it written, but, but, but we realize from the tradition of the culture of the time Jesus grew up in, Jesus was required because some believe his father, his earthly father, Joseph, died in early age. Some believe it was during the teenage years of, of when Jesus was coming up. And according to, to, to Jewish tradition, the oldest had the responsibility of taking care of the family. And so most believe, most believe that because of this, uh, Jesus had as the eldest the responsibility, watch this, of taking care of brothers and sisters. Jesus had the responsibility of making sure the family had income. Y'all talk to me. Remember, his father was a carpenter. Somewhere along the line, some of the older didn't believe Jesus took the trade of carpentry so he could make sure the family was taken care of. We understand that his mom, Mary, uh, it was never recorded that, that she worked anywhere. So because he was the eldest of the family, some believe the reason his ministry started later 
is because he was there helping to train his younger brothers and sisters. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And so we, we begin to ask ourselves the question, all right, Jesus, uh, you, you, you have sat, you have done all you can, you took care of the family, you, you trained the younger brothers and sisters. Uh, now Jesus said, his time has now come. He's ready to go into me. Anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about here? Uh, most as, as we start to look and realize that, that, that part of our serving uh, starts at home <clears throat> and it spreads abroad. And so what we see here is not only Jesus being an example of a life of service, but we also have to go back and say, okay, Jesus, where did you learn how to do this? What did you learn how to have compassion? Uh, what did you learn how to stay long enough to help those who needed your help? Well, some believe that he had to be prepared for serve. I, I, I looked at it again, and think it's kind of, I, I oftentimes look at Jesus being a baby. Sure, we know that he was God the Father. We also know he was also God in the flesh. But, but we also know that, that he had likeness as a man. Somewhere along the line, uh, Mama and, and uh, Mary and Joseph were still having to pour into Jesus. Y'all believe that? Somewhere along the line, he was having to take care of his brothers and sisters. And, and through all of those concepts as a young man and growing up taking care of his family, maybe perhaps huh, he learned how to serve. <laughs> when we get to look and realize that it was in serving. It was important out to his family that he began to develop his compassion that, that, that we'll see during his ministry years. Maybe during that time, we, we, we started to see uh, that, that the reason why he was able to reach out to children because he was there to help nurture his brothers and sisters. Maybe we saw that because he, he, he was there for his family he didn't mind touching lepers. Maybe he had a cousin that was left. We don't know. We, we can't, we can't uh, amen, uh, 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 infer within. We, we can only see what was in front of us. But we also realize that he embraced the outcast. It was a pattern that had grown in Jesus throughout his life of caring for his own family. And, and so can I share with you how, how, how vital this is? Because a lot of us have the traits of a servant. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but but some of us, we were there to help raise up uh, our, our brothers and sisters. We, we we took care of this and we took care of that. Velma, it's already in you because most of us don't realize we were prepared to move into the, uh, the field of serving uh, through all the things we went through. And so, uh, again, as we look at the reality that we have here, we see Jesus' life of service and we cannot discount the fact that it had to start somewhere. Amen. Anybody with me? And, and, and again, as we start to look at it, we realize that here it is. How do you feel about the service that you give to you? It becomes important. Because again, uh, as Jesus served his family, it prepared him to serve others. So when we start to look at it, we realize that charity begins at home. And, it's, and, it, and, it, and it goes about. And so again, we realize that we cannot uh, take care of everybody else's house if our house is not in order. Is not in order. Amen. That's the concept Amen. of need. That's the Amen. question. How, how can you rule the church if you, 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 you hadn't yet gotten to the concept of you ruling your own house? And, and that concept it, it, it indeed comes about because we realize we've got to make sure that we've done all we can to ensure our family is where it needs to be. Can I give you uh, a little bit of what I found in Joshua 24 and 15. Can I throw this at you? Joshua chapter 24 and 15. Old Testament. Because this, this concept of, of taking care of the family, making sure the family is in place, I think is important for us. Uh, Joshua 24 verse 15. Uh, we, we remember, we remember um, that, that as uh, Joshua was, was getting ready to, uh, to depart and, and he, everybody had gotten to the place they had chosen that land. They were getting ready to develop and to go forward. Joshua has his last conversation, his farewell message with them. And in that, in that particular uh, lesson, verse 14 says, Now therefore fear the Lord. This is him talking. Serve him sincerely and in truth. Verse 14. Put away the gods which your father served on the side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve you the Lord. He's giving them direction. Look at verse 15. He said, 
And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your father served them on the other side of the floor of the gods of the Amorites in which land you bear with. But I need you to see that as for me, look last again, and my house, the house I'm responsible for, the house that I'm a priest over, we will serve the Lord. Uh, again, we, we wonder, as we look again at it, how do we feel about serving those who are in our family? When we think about it, here it is, we look at it, Jesus commands his people, I mean, sorry, Joshua. Joshua commands his people to choose who they will serve. That's important. He's already laid it out and said, look, uh, if you choose God, you'll be blessed. But if you choose the Amorites, you, you, you find yourself not being blessed. But he makes a choice. And what he says to them, as the priest of my house, <laughs> Charles, I got to share this with you, who was charged, watch this, with the responsibility to see that his whole house served the Lord. He said, as for me, I'm leading my family to serve the Lord. As for me, I'm going to do all I can to make sure that I put in place things so that my children and my children's children and the grandchildren, that everybody will be able to serve God the way they're supposed to. So can I share with you? He said to you and I, he has the responsibility to see that his whole house did what? Serve the Lord. And so again, as we begin to look and realize, watch this, a servant leader should follow Christ. He or she should be tuned in to the family needs and concern, watch this, for his spiritual welfare. And, and, and that's why we got to be careful, my brothers and sisters, that, that after a certain point, uh, we, we, we say to children, you can you can come to church and you don't have to. <laughs> you know, at, at a certain point, you know, you don't have to read your Bible no more. We, 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 we sometimes, because I hate to tell you, we take the breaks off. We allow our children oftentimes to just make their own way. But, but Joshua said, no, wait a minute now. You got to be careful. It, because, again, uh, everything in life is a choice. And, and if we are going to continue uh, to help them to serve God, we got to make sure that we put some mandates and some things in place. Because here it is. I'm concerned about your spiritual will. And, and that becomes important for us. Because when we begin to look at it, we realize that, that, that he, he, he served to Jesus, his family. By making sure that they first knew how to serve God. But secondly, Joshua said, that they had a good role model to follow. So when we start to look at it, we realize that Paul, not only of Joshua, but also Jesus, was to make sure that he stayed there long enough. His brothers and sisters to have a, a, a good upbringing, but also to have a good role model. Amen? Amen. You, you, you can't go out there and only be a role model for people in the street. And not be a good role model for the people that stands under your roof. Y'all with me here? You, you, you can't go out there and you serve everybody else and you don't serve your family. Amen. That's what he is saying to you and I as we look at Jesus. He, he, he's showing you and I that we should be concerned about family. That's important. That's important. So as, as we get ready to leave here, can I say I'm saying, he served his family by making sure that first knew how to serve God, but then secondly, and they had a good role model to follow. I'm going to leave it right there. We're going to come back next week. Uh, you have your outline in front of you. I encourage you to read through your scriptures as God has placed it in front of us. As we come back and we deal with a profound act of service. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we bless you once again for all that you've done. For the blessing, God, of letting us come before your throne of grace. God, we pray, Lord, that there's something said and done will bring God the body of Christ, God, new revelation, new understanding. God, as you've become through Jesus a role model for us, we pray, Father, that we will be able to walk like you want us, talk yeah. like you want us, do what you call us to do. Yeah. God, we praise you right now for all the many blessings that God, you and you only have provided for us. Now, God, dismiss us from this place, never from your sight. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Did everybody say yeah. Amen. Everybody say Amen. Everybody say Amen. 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 Amen.
bless you. Good night, everybody. <laughs>